friends, we made it back inside. The weather outside said not so outside, so we just gathered everything together and came inside, and we're so glad that you were standing by to see us come back alive. Amen? In the name of Jesus, this program will go forth. We are going to raise up the banner of love, which is Jesus Christ himself. So we just want to say thank you and welcome back, and without further ado, Minister Sherwood, you know what to do. Hallelujah. Bless God. Well, listen, uh, we're so grateful even in spite of the impediment in weather, we were t anticipating something like that, amen. So we're not disappointed, and we want to encourage you, women of new life, amen, to be encouraged, Mother Bernadine, amen. Song says grateful. All of us have something to be grateful for, isn't that right? Yeah, it died because of the water. It's gonna, it's gonna keep going back and forth, so y'all just bear with us. Grateful, say. Grateful, 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 grateful
a prayer warrior in this house, and a blessed soldier in God's army who has touched the lives of countless women, children, and families. Not only answering the call here within the New Life body, but addressing the needs beyond our walls in the neighborhoods, homes, and lives where the Lord leads her. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Jesus commands us, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Minister Carla is about that life. Born and raised in a life of church service, she not only talks the talk, she walks the walk. She is a leader, running things, directing the administration of this church. She is a teacher in our women's ministry, breaking down the word and making it plain for all who study with her. She is that resource connector, encouraging us to serve God in our auxiliaries and through New Life's community outreach programs to our highest capabilities. And she sings her, her heart out unto the Lord as a servant on the praise team. All of this and more she does to the glory of God because she cares. She has a deep faith and believes in us to accomplish great things in the Lord. But don't get it twisted, Minister Carla used to be a drill sergeant. Let that sink in. <laughs> Y'all already know Minister Carla does not play. She is serious about her ministry. She will counsel, she will direct, and if called for, she will show up at your house and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit into your midst. She will do it. I mean, she's a bad sister. <laughs> Amen. 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 And this is only part of who Minister Carla is. She is a loving mother to Charity, Celeste, and Silas, who we love. Grandmother to Avery and Elena, and daughter to our very own Mother Bernadine Randall. And she is a dear friend to us all. I want you to know that um, in addition to the urging of the Holy Spirit, Minister Carla Powell played a key role in my family and I joining this church. Uh, when we relocated here several years ago from New York City, my mom found this church online, and on our first visit, Minister Carla was preaching that day. And uh, soon after that, we met Bishop Register and Lady Sela, who welcomed us warmly into the fold. Um, but on that very first visit, it was Minister Carla whom we met and her friendliness and all of that put together encouraged us to, in, to join this church. And uh, we've been here serving and worshiping in this house ever since. Amen. So I wanna thank you for that. Um, and so without further ado, let us receive our blessed prayer warrior, our beloved friend and dear woman of God, who is above all, the Lord's servant. We love you. Amen. Minister Paula Powell. Yes, are you gonna sing for me? Yes. Yes, please sing for me. You gonna sing for me? Okay, come on, I need you to sing for me. Come sing for Grandmama, please. You ready?
the music, the weather, and all of that. We trust that you've had your COVID-19 screenings, amen, and those who are close together, you're together for the sake of us and for those watching because you're family and you can be close together, amen. And we're trying to maintain our social distancing. We're trusting that we're knowing that God covers and protects us, but there's no one with a sickness, disease, coughing, and traveled outside the United States so that we can officially say that we've set some things in order here in this house. Amen. Amen. I thank and honor and praise God for the privilege that he has given me to stand before you today. Amen. And I thank and praise God for my bishop, my pastor, Dr. Robert Register, who's traveling, who called me last night to make sure that I was ready and prepared. You've been with me for 20 years. You got this. You got this. I said, I know. And I've been with the Lord a little longer. So I got this. I got this. Amen. Amen. To our first lady, Lady Silla, my comrade, my co-worker, my, my uh, confidant. Amen. I praise God for you, Lady Silla. And to my mother for hearing the word of God upon this request and asking, or shall I say, tasking me to take this endeavor. And to my dear sister, Minister T, who supports her in this, amen. To my children, Charity, Celeste, and my son, Silas, and the grandkids, and to my new life family, and all my family and friends that are watching near and far on Facebook or whatever, to you all, to the brothers and sisters of New Life Christian Fellowship, give yourselves a hand, amen. Hallelujah, because this couldn't be done without your love and your prayers and your support. Those of working and serving right here on the battlefield with me. Also, uh, Apostle Mark, thank you, amen, and Pastor Beverly for taking time away from your congregation to come and to be a part of this celebration with your other family. Amen. Amen. I bless each and every one of you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day for these, your people. I ask, Father God, that your will be done today, Lord, as I decrease and you increase. Remove anything, Father God, that is not like you. And though we have prepared everything, Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to have its way today in us. I pray for the hearts and the minds of your people today. Let this word, Lord Jesus, be seasoned with the savor of your love and your gentleness and your kindness. And gentle. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So the, the theme that was chosen for this particular occasion is empowered women choose faith over fear, trust over doubt in a pandemic season. If, if, and I hope that you all are praying with me and you're going to take the breaks off because I just have to be me, amen? And I just have to do it the way I have to do it. And though we want to be proper and we want to be in order and there are certain protocols, we all have our own individual character and style and the way God uses us. So I ask that you take the brakes off, amen? Loosen up, amen? And so that we can continue to worship together, amen? Well, the question is, how many of you feel empowered today? Okay, if your hand didn't raise, that's all right, because I hope by the end of this message, you will feel empowered. According to the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9, I will read, and it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not in us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Some of you know the word, and you can even repeat it with me. We're perplexed, but not in despair. 
persecuted but not forsaken, cast down and not destroyed. I like the New Living Translation on that first verse. It says, we have this light from God in our human bodies. This shows that the power is from God and not ourselves. So everything we do, it is from God and not ourselves. We can prepare, we can do all that we think that we can do, but it really is from God. You know, this is a special day and a special season. On August 26th of this month, it marked the 100-year anniversary of the 19th Amendment that granted women the right to vote. How fitting it is that we would have our day of celebration, Women's Day. During this time, during this season, of women who were persecuted, women who couldn't do some things, women who couldn't stand in the pulpit, women who couldn't join the military forces, how befitting it it is that this was the day that marked that they can have the right to vote. As Shanine read, thank you, Shanine, for that introduction as she read and she shared with you, some of you may know my experience in the military as a drill sergeant. Some of you may know and some of you may not know. Those of you who are on Facebook who are watching for the first time, you'll get a chance to learn a little bit about me and when I was training troops in boot camp. We made them run all the time. They didn't understand why. We made them do push-ups over and drop, do push-ups. It seemed like it was for nothing. But ultimately, it was to prepare them for graduation and possibly to go to war. They were up at 4 a.m., run four or five miles, take four or five miles to long, rough, rough marches out to the rifle ranges. But when they've gone through a long day, they came back. And they needed a cadence caller because you had to march back from the range, a long march, and you were tired. And you needed a motivation. You needed to be inspired. Those troops needed to be reignited after a long, hard day. Well, guess what? God sent me here today to do the just the same. The troops would call upon me and say, Drill Sergeant Bob, please sing us some cadence. Because they wanted to know, they wanted to hurry up and get to that destination. God sent me here today to ignite you, to empower you, to invoke something in you. We used to sing a song that said, Just the other day I heard the drill sergeant say. Any of you heard that? It's like a cadence. I say this and you say that. Sing with me. Just the other day I heard the Holy Spirit say. Just the other day I heard the Holy Spirit say. Drive on smooth and the soldiers will say. Drive on soldiers. Drive on soldiers. Soldiers drive on. Amen. I think I can do something with y'all. Amen. Amen. We're going to ignite something here. We're going to drive on in the midst of the rain, in the midst of having to change the equipment and all of that that's going on. We're still going to drive on, soldiers. Amen. We're going to drive on and march for the battle of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to continue. Now, in this scripture... Paul was speaking to comfort and encourage the church during these hard times. So the word that he was speaking in, who he was speaking to really apply to those who know Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, but however, if there's anyone here that does not know Christ, we're here to acquaint you with him. If you would like to know him, let one of our ministers know, or you can send a text if you're out on Facebook. But we hope what you gather here, it will make you want to know him if you don't know him. And someone, when you send that text or send that message, someone will get in touch with you and pray with you and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we want to establish that it is for those, this word is for those who know Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad I know him. Amen? Amen? I'm glad I am saved. Amen? In preparing for this, I looked up the word pandemic. And according to 
uh, Webster pandemic starts out as an outbreak. It is a sudden rise in incidence of disease, typically confined to a localized area or a specific group. Disease, or shall we say, dis-ease. We can be at dis-ease, not comforted. That is a condition that impairs the normal body functioning parts and is typically manifested by distinguished signs and symptoms. It's a harmful development in a social institution. That's dis-ease. So when an outbreak becomes more severe and less localized, it becomes an epidemic. When it broadens still further and affects significant portion of the population of the world, the disease becomes a pandemic. So that's how we get to that name, pandemic, because it broadens, it spread, it went out. Well, we're not only referring to the disease of COVID-19, but we're also referring to how Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy us through sin, and how he impairs our lives in various social situations. Situations like a lack of health care and mental illness, overcrowded prisons and hospitals, a lack of education and a high cost of student loans, broken relationships with no means of restoration, isolation and abandonment of our elderly mothers and fathers, displaced and separated immigrant families from their children, economic impoverished mindsets and lifestyles, racial injustices and acts of terror where black men and black women are being brutally murdered in the name of justice. And all this can be classified as a pandemic. Empowered. The empowered definition is to give someone the authority or the power to do something to make someone stronger or more confident, especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights. Having the knowledge, confidence to trust and not doubt, having the means or ability to do things or make decisions for oneself, faith and not fear. Ellen Earl Chaffee, who is a senior fellow of the Association of Governing Boards of the Universities and Colleges, and Daniel Seymour, university professor and administrator, said, that sounds good, right? <laughs> it said, empower personnel seek to eliminate the root cause of problems instead of being blamed for the problem. So that tells me if we're being blamed for the problem, then we must not be empowered to have it enough to seek to root the root cause of the problems. Today we can talk about some empowered women like Congresswoman Maxine Waters, California girl, she's yeah. my home girl. Or we can talk about Aunt Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. How about if we talked about Michelle Obama, the first black woman to be first lady of this country with a PhD? How about Kamala Harris, the first black woman to be selected on the ticket of a national presidential campaign, amen, as VP? How about if we talked about Carla Powell, the first black woman in her family to preach at New Life, amen? The list goes on and on and on and on and on. We can be empowered by man's ways or we can choose to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. I choose the Holy Spirit of God. So in order to be empowered by God, we must be vessels willing to carry the light, his spirit, even during a pandemic season. Hallelujah. We will never be empowered 
if we do not render ourselves to be used by the will of God. So how do we remain in his power, sustain his power, or regain his power in a pandemic season? Well, that's good, huh? I know that's what I said when the Lord dropped that on me. I said, hey, thank you, sister. Amen. When we have faith over fear, trust over doubt, and we are submitted to God, he empowers us to sacrifice to do his will, to serve for his glory, and let our light shine despite the challenges we face every day. So the points from the scripture that I want to pull out and, 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 and focus on is one, the excellence of power is from God and not us. Two, we are troubled on every side and not crushed. Three, perplexed but not despair. Four, persecuted and not abandoned. Five, struck down but not destroyed. For this message, I will take that scripture and the theme and weave it into the application of how each point may apply to a couple of empowered women in the Bible. And for the sake of time, I'm going to paraphrase the stories. And it is my hope that I inspire you and empower you through the Holy Ghost to go back and read it for yourself. Is that all right? So let's look at the first women, an empowered judge. I'm not talking about Judge Judy or Judge Maybelline. But we're talking about Judge Deborah, a strong, smart, intelligent woman in the Bible. She already had a high position in God. She already had God's power on her. So according to Judges chapter 4, I paraphrase. Deborah, a wise and holy woman, was empowered by God to be a leader, a prophetess, and a judge, a role model. For those called to lead. She was empowered to hold court and settle disputes, doing her business, operating in her gifts. She was operating in the excellence of power from God and not herself. Deborah had faith to call Barak, a fellow commander of the troops, and give him instructions from God to kill Sisera, who oppressed God's people for 20 years. For 20 years, for 20 years, they were oppressed. Barak knew she was empowered by God, and he refused to go unless she went with him. Now, some people said, well, he was weak, and that, that wasn't a good thing. But he knew where the anointing was. He knew where the power was. So Deborah agreed to trick Sisera and to lead Sisera and his troops to Kishon River and then Barak could capture and destroy him and his troops. Barak doubted. He doubted he could win without her. He feared without her support that he would be troubled on every side. But Deborah, she trusted in God that God would not crush them, that they would not be crushed. She had faith to go into battle, but I can imagine she may have been a bit, just a bit perplexed at Barak when he said he would not fight unless she went with him. But Deborah did not despair. She did not despair. She trusted God's power would protect her. Deborah warned him that he if he did not go, he would not get the credit and that God would not give him the victory to kill this wicked man, Sisera, and his thousands and thousands and thousands of troops. And the victory would go to an unsuspecting woman. Well, during the attack, Sisera ran away and a woman named J.L. lured him into her tent and she took a hammer and a peg and nailed it in his head and killed him. Now who's in power? During this pandemic 
We have to hear God. We have to obey and follow the instructions of God through prayer and through fasting and through reading the word of God. We have to exercise trust in what God says and what we say and do is right. Our actions, our attitudes, our behaviors, our look, our countenance, how we stand, that everything is right because we're walking in God's power. We must also be knowledgeable of what's going on around us, even in the news and social media, because without social media, I don't think we would have seen some of the incidents and accidents that have been happening in this country and society. So we also have to be knowledgeable of social media. We may be angry, we may be frustrated, even sad and hurt at times, but we must be available to hear from God, because we never know who or what stimulus packet will fall into your hands. Amen? Amen. Like this wicked man, Cesare, fell into the hands of this unsuspecting woman. The other woman in the Bible I want to discuss, her life, she started off a little lowly and small. She didn't have that power at the initial set on set that we see. But we'll see how she rises to power. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about how she became queen. Who do y'all think it is? Esther. 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 That's what we're talking about. So in the book of Esther, and if you come from my part of the country, we say Esther. <laughs> Amen. Well, the book starts off that they're at a banquet. Seven days of wine and partying and drinking. God knows what else was going on, what else was doing, what else was, who was doing, what else was going on. It was the celebrity party of the year. That's kind of like having Jay-Z and Beyonce and Lil Wayne and Snoop Doggy Dogg and Oprah and Gail was there, and Tiger Woods was there, Marvin Gaye the OJs, and Lil Richard was even there. How about that? <laughs> At the end of the seven days where they were partying, can you imagine partying for seven days? When you're young, you can do that. You can stay out all night and go to work. But when you get older, so can you imagine partying and drinking and eating and getting the best wine, drinking out the gold cups, getting the good wine, the good stuff, all for seven days? Can you imagine? So at the end of this seven days, King Exerceus, summons his queen Vashti to dance and to show off. Come on, baby, dance in front of everybody. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I was little and I used to go to those parties with my mama and them, they would call me, come on, children, y'all come dance. But this was his wife. This was the queen to dance. And guess what? She refused to go. The king was furious. And he was by, advised by all of his smart men like Pence and Kushner and Sessions. And, <laughs> I mean, he was advised by the official kingdoms, the officials of the kingdom. That's who advised him. They advised him to discipline her to prevent an outbreak of all the other women in the kingdom acting like Vashti, not obeying, not following suit. Perhaps the king had diverse, if had, if perhaps if the king had diversity or some other women on his staff or council, they would have advised him how that would have made her feel as a woman, as his wife, being paraded on stage. And that outcome may have become different. We know that some people don't mind being paraded. Some men don't mind having their wives show all kinds of things out to the world to make money. But this woman did not want to go. She did not want to be placed in that position. If Queen Vashti had wise women speaking into her life, mentoring her, they might have advised her differently. They might have told her, girl, don't you feel sick? Don't that make you sick? And she would probably say, yeah, I'm sick. That just makes me sick. 
and they will probably tell her, I know you sick. We're going to tell the king that you're sick because I know that make you sick. So we're going to tell the king you're sick. They may have advised her, but to tell the truth, if Shaniqua was there, <clears throat> Shaniqua would say, girl, you better take you some x lack or something. You better go get you some poison ivy and rub it all over yourself. You better take a hit of that or a puff of this and go in and tell him, you can't come. Here, take this, girl. You can't go. <laughs> but Queen Vastai should have known, should have known that you just don't flat out refuse the king's request. Now, a healthy fear and reverence for God's authority is a good thing. But if you truly know and trust God, sometimes it may cost you something. Queen Vashti may have been struck down from her position, but the king did not destroy her. He said, she just can't be in my presence. She can't be in my presence. And that was enough to strip Queen Vashti of all of her empowerment. The new queen. The new queen. Dun, da, da, da. Well, now the king has to find a new queen. And there's this young, one beautiful Jewish girl. She's fine. She got a nice shave. She's beautiful. She got nice complexion. She's gorgeous. And her name was Esther. Well, Esther's mom and dad died when she was young, so she was raised by her cousin, Mordecai. So cousin Mo, <clears throat> you know, helped her to ultimately become queen. Amen? <laughs> y'all like that, Cousin Mo, huh? Oh, we all got to have a Cousin Mo or, or Cutting Mo or somebody, Uncle Mo, or somebody to help us advance. Because he said, she family. She family. I got to watch out for my family. I got to look out for my family. I got to take care of my family. Family. See, when he made that decision when she was just a little girl, he probably didn't even know what she would rise to become. Amen. But Cousin Mo said she's family. Amen. So Haman, one of the king's most powerful men in the empire, had an evil plot to kill the Jews just because Cousin Mo wouldn't bow down to him like everybody else in the White House. I mean, everybody else in the kingdom. All right. Okay? Uh, <laughs> Esther <laughs> had to have faith over fear and trust over doubt to request the king to save the lives of her people because of Haman's wicked plot to kill them. So no matter how much favor the queen had, no matter how much favor, you know, Queen Esther had with the king and his officials and his Enochs, the eunuchs, eunuchs, these were the men that were castrated, but they were put to take care of the king's harem and to train them and teach them and to groom them. These were the men who did that for, for the queens. So, but no matter how fine she was, no matter how much estelada she used, no matter how much MAC makeup she used, no matter how high her red bottom shoes were, no matter how healthy she ate, no matter how many times she worked out, it did not matter. Because at first, Esther still was afraid. She didn't want to go. She did not want to be that living sacrifice to submit to her purpose and to carry the message to the king. A message that would force the king to listen to our local and national protests and take notice when we go out and vote. A message to change the laws to give better health care coverage for all people and stop the spread of this pandemic disease, COVID-19. A message to change the laws to reduce the overcrowded prisons and increase the funding for education and create jobs with adequate pay so we can live. <laughs> 
A message to change the laws and procedures to end institutional racism and injustices, police, police brutality, and to stop killing our people. So Queen Esther did not want to carry this message to the king. She didn't want to approach him to change and ask him to change his wicked decree that Haman systematically implemented to kill all the men, the women, and children after she feared. She was afraid that she may die. And you know, my Bible tells me that this plot was planned to kill, this action, this execution was planned on the 13th day. <laughs> on the 13th day. But all right, here we go. But I said she was afraid. She didn't want to go. Sometimes we're afraid. Sometimes I don't want to go. Sometimes I feel inadequate. Sometimes I feel like I'm not enough. Sometimes you may be afraid. But she realized and Esther found her voice. Take a breath. Come on, y'all. Take a breath again. Can you breathe? Take a breath again. Can you breathe? If you can breathe, we are still alive. Can you find your voice? Can you find your voice? Let me hear it say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can breathe. Hallelujah. I can find my voice in Jesus Christ. Can you see the shining light shining to empower you? To live in his abundant blessing no matter what pandemic you face that make you cover your face with a mask. She realized how much she mattered. And the power was not of herself, but was of God. She chose faith over fear, trust over to carry the light of hope, not just to the king, okay? Not just to save herself, but to save an entire nation of people. Before she went to see the king, Queen Esther fasted and she prayed, and how about she recruited some other people to be on her campaign, ha uh ha. -huh. Then she planned a feast for the king and said, if I perish, let me perish, but I'm going to see the king. Some of you know that. If I perish, let me perish, but I'm going to see the king. If my mother don't go, my father don't go, my sisters don't go, my brothers don't go, I'm going to see the king. Hallelujah. Amen. It's amazing. Come on, stand on your feet. You know, it's amazing. God has empowered us. Amen. Hallelujah. God has empowered us. And we as women, empower women, know whose authority they walk in. And they obey the will of God. Empower women, know what's inside of them and where they come from. Do not, do not even really matter. Empower women, don't despair because others notice when they walk in the truth and the favor of God. Empower women know that there are risks, but they go anyway. Empower women do it anyway. Empower women are not distracted. They're not discouraged. They're not cast down. They're not downtrodden. Despite of a pandemic, we must be empowered to demonstrate faith over fear and trust over doubt. Who knows? We may have to save our nation. Even President Obama remarked in his opening speech the night of the Democratic Convention, do not let them take away your power. Did you hear him? Oh, yeah. Did you hear him? Do yeah. not let them take away your power. 
So I say to you today, saints, I say to you, my brothers and sisters on Facebook, I say to you, my family and my friends, I say to you, have faith in God and his power that is within us. Don't fear. Don't doubt because Jesus paid it all when he sacrificed his life and he died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for our sins, and he shed his blood on Calvary. He too had to say to his father, if I perish, let me perish. We may lose a car, we may lose a home, we may lose a job, we may lose family, but not the spirit of God through faith and not fear. It is God who empowers us to remain, to sustain and regain our strength, to carry his light, to receive his blessings. For the glory of God, despite an yeah. outbreak yeah. in a pandemic. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to be encouraged. We ought to have the light to shine. We ought to have the light to shine. I don't know even if there's anyone in here who doesn't really know what that means. But you can accept him right now. You can just stay where you are and wave your hand and say, I accept Jesus as my Savior. Maybe you, maybe you didn't know how to sustain it. And maybe you wanted to retain it. And maybe you needed to regain it. And God is here to instill that into you. Hallelujah. So if there's anybody who want to dedicate or rededicate or commit their lives to the Lord, we're trusting and believing. Perhaps you want to send in a text and you can send a text in. Perhaps you want to send in a message to let our pastor know that you were encouraged by the word of God. Hallelujah. Because that's what we come here for. We as the saints come here. It's about Christ and his power and his glory. Amen. Amen. As I look around, I trust you to see that we see those. There's no one who don't know Christ. Amen. That's a good thing. The angels in heaven rejoicing that we know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we give all praise, honor, and glory to God for his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you for this time that you have given us, God. We thank you that we're now preparing our hearts and minds. Now that we have received the word, we're preparing for the offering. Amen. Amen. We're preparing, hallelujah, that God will allow us to be encouraged and to be empowered no matter what it looks like, no matter what we think we have. We don't know what's inside sometimes. Hallelujah. Minister T. Hallelujah. Let's give our minister Collie another round of applause right now because we truly thank God for the word that has been given to us. And I know that so many of us, we still love that part. If I perish, let me perish, for I'm going to meet the king. Even we know that it's offering time right now, and many of you who are watching on Facebook, and we know that right now we still have some of our members who are outside, and you would like to participate in this time of offering. If you would just blow your horn outside, we'll send an usher outside as they pick up the offering for you, okay, amen? But let us pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful, Lord, and we're so honored that you would bring us here today, dear God, even in this climate weather. But what we want to do right now, in the name of Jesus, is to give you back what you have given to us. We want to give back to what you have commanded us is to give. And you only ask us is to give you just a portion, God. So we want to give our portion to you, Lord. And we know that you will be honored. You will honor it, Lord. So we thank you, O oh God, that as each of us began this year,
give our tithes and our offering, and even those who know that there is a special offering that we ask even at this time, Lord. We want to receive it right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Ushers, you may serve the people at this time who are inside. Blow your horn outside right now. We'll have an usher is to come right outside is to give that, uh, pick up the offering for you. If you're on Facebook right now, go right ahead. Press that button so that you can be a part of the offering at this time. of our program that is in memorial. And we know this pandemic season that we're in and throughout, we have lost several people, families. Those of us who have not been touched by the COVID, we're blessed. But then there's others that have been touched, lost loved ones, through other various, not only through COVID, not only through the brutality of police shooting down and murdering our black brothers and our black sisters. Yeah. Brianna yeah. Taylor, we remember you today. But we have lost one of our dear saints of our new life family this year back on may the 30th and we just want to take this time to recognize her in remembrance we weren't able to have a service here in honor of her life and her service at new life but we wanted to take this special women's day to remember sister mary dolores do. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, 
right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, you saith the spirit that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. For we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made by hands, eternal into the heavens. We praise God that we have members of Sister Mary Dolores do family here. And we would like you to stand at this moment. In fact, you can come up here. As we want to read the re resolution from the New Life Christian Family Fellowship Church on behalf of our dear loving sister who serves so faithfully with us and she's so missed. I could just see her right there. Amen. A resolution in loving memory, Evangelist Mary Dolores Dew. According to his tender mercy, God, who in his infinite, in his wisdom, who is infinite in his wisdom, has seen fit to move from our midst, our beloved sister in Christ, by means of death on May 30th, 2020. Whereas our sister accepted a hope in Christ at an early age and demonstrated throughout her life a sincere desire to walk with God. Whereas Mary Dew, a faithful servant and pillar of the gospel who prayed and shared the word of God for years to many people, even during her unspoken pain and adversity. Whereas the passing of our beloved sister has left us with sorrow in our hearts, we acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know our hearts ache with sorrow, but are comforted by knowing God will not put more on us than we can bear. Amen. Whereas we believe the words of Jesus in John the 14th chapter, that encourages us to let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Therefore, may it be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Mary Dew, but will attempt to demonstrate her sweet love for you. Be, be it further resolved that a period of official mourning will be observed and acknowledge the passing of our dear sister, and that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. Official proclamation. We are in place in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of an infant begins the race to, the, to grace. A race every man must run. For the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but those who endure to the end. Humbly submitted, Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register, pastor of the New Life Christian Fellowship. And because of that, the women's ministry of New Life like to present to the family this plaque in honor and in love and it says in memory of Sister Mary Dolores Dew
dedicated servant of the New Life Christian Fellowship. So we hope that these words and this small gesture will serve as a reminder to you, the family, of how much we loved her and how much we cared for her, what she meant to our family, and made it encourage you to look to God and that she's looking down on you and she will encourage you. And that we loved her as you loved her. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. to give a special acknowledgement. She's not here today, but I wanted her to know that I'm thinking about her. Because I know uh, she would be here if she had been able to be here. And um, But she serves as our women's ministry uh, administrator. She makes sure that we get our announcements out every other week. And so this I have flowers for Sister Loretta and a little love for her. So I will see that she gets it. They say thank you for your service. And then we appreciate you. We know that you've been going through some stuff, having to help support your sister in her illness. So we thank you, Loretta, for what you did. Sister Loretta Negron. Thank you. 
first of all, I just want to thank all of you who have made this program what it is. I thank God for giving us the insight, the spirit in which to be able to present. We thank most of all his Holy Spirit being in this place. I see faces that I haven't seen. I thank you for those who have come out today. I would thank you for our visitors. We thank you for our uh, nun members who were here and who have contributed to us today. We thank the Lord for Minister Carla Powell for the message that God gave her. We were listening. We thank God for the message that He gave her to give her. And it's something that we can go home and stir on and stew over with old folks who say. I not only thank her for the message. I thank her for being my hands and my legs. But I couldn't do whatever I asked her to do. She did it willingly and sharing it. She did the running for me. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Sometimes we don't get to tell our loved ones how much we appreciate what they do for us. Yes. And I thank God for my daughter. And I thank God for what she is to do life. I want to thank God for Minister Sherwood and Brother Chris, Deacon Chris, and Deacon Rogers, for just chipping in and being here and supporting her to Pastor uh, Mark. And most of all, to Bishop Robert Register for allowing me the opportunity and the privilege to serve as women's ministry leader and to do the job that he saw fit for God for me to do. Amen. I thank my co-chairman, Minister T, for all the Sister Tracy, how many of y'all saw the flyer on Facebook with the picture of Carla and Bishop? She did that one of Charity's good friends. She does our flyers for it. Thank you, Tracy. To our ushers and our hospitality committee for doing the work. We're gonna have a little, we have a little sandwiches, a little snack for you to take with you as you leave here. And we thank these ladies for putting that together. As I said to Minister uh, Sherwood and Brother Chris and Brother David, you know, it's just good to have men behind you. And good how they watch them, how they, we tried to start outside, they didn't flip, they didn't get angry, they just flipped the script and we just back in here. So thank you so much, thank you much. And for uh, Brother Chris and his audio, Things. I hope I did not leave out anyone or forget anyone, as they say, if oh, I did. One of those cards outside. Oh, the cards that are outside. Oh, we have people still yes. uh, worshiping in their cars outside. Hallelujah, wow. praise yeah. God. Yeah. We thank you out, out there and all those that are out there in Facebook land. Uh, I think I have family back in California that is watching, but all of you, and we pray that you will continue. They honking out there. They stood in the rain. They decided they didn't leave. We didn't decide. Yeah, that's the rain. They stayed out there in their cars, and they're watching uh, on Facebook, and we thank God for them. Again, if I've forgotten anyone, we thank God. I thank my little great greats for my oh, son. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, no, that's right. Oh, yes. okay. oh. All right. And those who are outside in the cars, if you want, we do have snack boxes ready. And if you'd like to come to the door and get something to eat before you leave, you can. With that being said, we're going to have uh, our minister, Carla, to come back and do benediction. <coughs> And I hope you were blessed by this. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Pastor Beverly, good to see you as well.
Amen. I thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah, team. Hallelujah, team. Thank you, Lord. And we thank Sister Scylla for making our face masks. How about that? Hallelujah. Well, Mom did all the thank yous, but I too wanted to say just thank you. I know that it is challenging, and we knew that the enemy didn't want us to prevail. But nevertheless, nevertheless, we were able to make those adjustments. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord is satisfied, is well pleased with our efforts. If this was a small sacrifice to pay, a small price to pay, knowing that what is up ahead, that God is going to bless us. I, I thank and praise God, Dana and Denise and Maurice. Maurice. Which one is it? Matthew, Matthew. Matthew, 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 Matthew. I talked all about Deborah, but I miss Matthew, <laughs> Matthew. We know that it is hard sometimes when things come back up and stirring up, but she stirred us up, and we couldn't just leave without letting it uh, just go without us as our family, our new life family, honoring her. We couldn't do it then, and I, we know that it was oppressed to have that stir back up, but guess what? There are always going to be memories that stirring back up. Sometimes will be easier than others. Sometimes it'll be funny stuff. Sometimes you're going to laugh. Sometimes you're going to be like, whoa, I'm glad, you know. But God wanted you all to know that we are her family. We were her family. She was our family, a part of us, and we so wanted to honor her. And that in spite of that, we thank and praise God that he allowed us to be here to support in that. I thank all the men who sacrificed and came, as mom said, to come and to be a part of this. Even though we were talking about women and empowerment, I thank the men. Amen. Thank you, Lorena, for taking time away from your other ministry. Amen. To come out and push and press and give some encouragement to a sister. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. Thank you, Marvin. Amen. The twin's father. Amen. Amen. Amen, for coming and sacrificing for the time that he takes. Amen. He works at Enterprise. God is really blessing his people and doing something. I don't know about y'all, but this pandemic been good to me and my family. I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I got all my kids got new cars for Marvin out of this pandemic. Amen. All three of mine. Amen. My pastor got a new car. Our deacon in the sound got a new car. Amen. Valeria, where you at? She got a new car. Amen. She out there. So I don't know about y'all, but this pandemic has yeah, been yeah. good to us. We have to look at it, amen, and see. Yeah. T, and T got a new car, the Red Bear, and I forgot about that. I was thinking about somebody else, but I thank and praise God for all of you and each of you, amen. I thank those of you who was praying for me and sent messages and text Chantel early in the morning and Willie Ann, amen, and those of you who may not have sent a message, but you were praying. I think we're doing pretty good on time, amen. It's about 102 or 103, amen. Let us stand and prepare for the benediction. You know, the benediction is the blessing. And because we came out and we did what we did in spite of, I trust and believe that God will bless. Amen. And I see uh, my dear sister friend, Kim Possible over there. She grabbing the mic, so she must come <laughs> sing the song. I kind of like that song, putting on that robe. That, I, I know we was talking about Mary Do maybe, and, and when we get to heaven, but, but uh, you know, like Queen Esther was putting on that robe yeah, yeah, yeah. too. I know that. So whatever you want to do, as we get ready and, and to go. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, go in his peace, go in his grace, and go in his mercy. Amen. Amen. Amen.